Hello and welcome. We're going to solve this problem together because it couldn't fit the whole problem onto the computer screen in a nice way. So just follow along and then pause and make sure you try certain things on your own. Let's read the problem first. Uh, firing a piece of pottery in a kiln takes place at different temperatures for different amounts of time. The graph below shows the temperatures in a kiln while firing a piece of pottery after the kiln is preheated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got a lot of context here. But let's, let's just skip ahead to the question. During which time interval did the temperature in the kiln show the greatest uh, average rate of change? So I see greatest rate of average change. I'm going to make a comment to myself here. They're asking us which section has the greatest slope or the steepest slope. And it's really hard to tell. I mean, you can't tell visually. Um, it looks even like this line has the same slope as the next section, but it doesn't, just to clarify. All right, these have different slopes, right? Um, or at least you're not, let's just say we're not sure yet if they're the same or different. So we have to calculate it. I can tell that here, the, the slope, even though it's curved, sorry, even though the line is curved here, we can find the average rate of change. So for example, in this section right here, if you wanted to find the slope, you could just think of a line connecting these two points and find the slope of that line. Sorry, I don't know why I chose yellow. And the same thing is true here. If you want to find the slope between these two points, you can think of a line connecting them to find the slope. But I can tell visually that these two lines um, are not nearly as steep as the lines before it. Remember that if you have a graph, for example, um, when we say something's more steep in terms of positive slopes, let's say we have this slope right here, this is less steep than something here. And what I think about, this is um, M, we'll call this M2, this is M1, the two slopes, M2 this is much steeper than M1, right? And you, if, you, if you're standing here, you can think, which of these two hills is harder to climb? The one that's harder to climb is steeper. With negative slopes, same idea, except you could think of it as an analogy where you have this line, let's say, and this one. Which one's steeper now? Well, think if you're standing here, which one would, if you're running down the hill or skiing down the hill, which one, in, on which hill would you go faster? M3 or M4? Well, M4 has steeper here, so the absolute, the, the, the slope here is steeper as well. So if you're doing negatives, you can think of steeper in the sense of, well, which, which hill would I go down faster? With positive slopes, which would be harder to climb? If you don't like that argument, just think about the absolute value. Uh, that's the absolute value or distance from zero. The greater the absolute value, the um, steeper the slope. So for example, maybe, um, let's replace these, these slopes here with numbers. If M1 is about, I don't know, two, and M, M2 is, let's say, 3, slope of 3. I don't know if that looks good to scale. Let's say 5. So now, clearly, 5 is bigger than 3, so um, M2 is steeper, right? But here with negatives, it might not be as clear, right? But let's just say, let's say this is negative 5, and let's say negative 4, negative 6, sorry. And here, let's say that this is about negative 3. Which is steeper now? Well, since the absolute value of negative 6 is 6, and that's greater than the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3, right? we say that that slope is steeper. So another way of thinking about slope is the absolute value. Anyway, so in this problem, I could tell that the answer is 1. Because if I calculate slope, and you can go through all of these, going from 0 to 1 gives me the steepest slope. Uh, this point right here, you can tell the intervals are going up by 200. So this point is the point 0, 200. And this point is 1, 700. So to find slope, we take those two points, right? And we subtract the y values. Slope is the difference of the y values. Oops. Divided by the difference of the x values. So here, that means we're taking 700 minus 200 over 1 minus 0, which is 500 over 1, which is just 500. Any other slope here that you find, you could try them all, you will find is a lower number. All right, I hope this helped.